Okay, so we sort of left off here. We, we discussed this briefly, particularly the fact that in the first 10 seconds, we see that the reaction is not at equilibrium. There's not an instantaneous change so that we have an addition of a catalyst at this point. If this was flat and then there was a change, that would be corresponding to a temperature change, right? Make sense? Yeah. The change here, we've got an increase in concentration of all chemical species, right? Which would indicate a decrease in volume. And then the adjusted change back to equilibrium. And then this third change at 30 minutes, we've had an instantaneous change by increasing the concentration of only oxygen. So put in more oxygen into the system, and then the system partially adjusts by shifting the reaction forward. We could have then, you know, read off at these points in time where it reaches equilibrium using our equilibrium expression for Kc and determine the value of Kc for those. Right? Make sense? Yeah? Cool. Um, all right. This is where we're up to. So a exam question from 2014. I've selected two particular questions for good reasons, right? Obviously, there's something about the questions that the examiners have commented on. So 2014, question six. Mixture of iodine and hydrogen gas gives us hydrogen iodide into a vessel and sealed, right? Mixture will establish an equilibrium as described as follows. I2 plus H2 gives us two HI. In an experiment, three mole of iodine and two mole of hydrogen added in a one litre vessel. So we're adding these in. So what's the initial amount of HI? Zero, exactly right. So we're gonna put up our ice table, yeah? The amount of iodine present at equilibrium was 1.07 mole. Constant temperature was maintained in the reaction vessel throughout the experiment. Write the expression for the equilibrium constant for the reaction and determine the equilibrium concentrations and hence calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. All right, I'll pause it there. Might be a graph of the decrease in the concentration of I2 until equilibrium is effectively reached as shown in figure one. On figure one, draw clearly label graphs to show how the concentrations of H2 and HI change over the same period. Well, we know what the equilibrium concentrations are, right? So we're going to draw the graph corresponding to that. So what would H2 look like? Yeah, right, 2.07. And... So it's going to reach equilibrium at the same location. All right, so we're not... Remember, oh, really, it should be like this. Yeah? Technically speaking, it's dynamic because... Dynamic is all right. Uh, all right, so we're going to label that H2. HI. Where does it begin? Start from zero. Start from zero, ends at... 3.86. Right, 3.86 is up here. It's going to end at the 3.86, which is there. Right, and it's going to go something like that. Yeah? That was pretty good. Yeah, so it ends at the same point, right? So it has to end at the same point, all three concentrations. We know that it can be set at 25 we know it. Yeah, because this flattens at 25, both of these also have to flatten at 25. Yeah? Okay. Indicate, I'll, I'll just go back and I'll copy over this one. Okay. Next question, indicate, right, I've redrawn them over. Indicate on figure two, I've just overlaid our initials, right? Indicate on figure two how the I2 concentration would change if a catalyst is added. It will reach equilibrium faster. So what does that mean? 
So he's like here, he's the initial. So tell me, someone want to draw it up on the board? Who wants to have a crack? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Ned, you look like you want to come up and have a crack. You want to have a crack? No, no, no. Ned, come. So I too. Yeah. Pause that. No. Remain the same. If conditions didn't remain the same, we may not reach the same point in equilibrium. Particularly if there's a temperature change, we'd reach a different point. Okay. Here we go. Pretty good. Right? Six AI, eighty-nine percent. Pretty good at writing equilibrium expression. One mark awarded for correct concentration of H two correct HI and the K value consistent with the calculated concentration of equilibrium law in question 6AI. So consequential marks, yeah? 39% got all three. 15 got two, 23 got one, and 23 got nothing for that question. Errors in this part of the question generally associated with misinterpretation of the supply data. Particularly, the amount of iodine present at equilibrium was 1.07 mole which a significant number of students seem to read as 1.07 mole of HI. Um, anyway, so making sure we're reading the question carefully. Okay, there we go. Sets up our ice table. There's our concentrations, right? 35% got two marks. The graph of HI starting at zero, leveling out around 30 to 35 seconds. Here, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. If you level, if based off your calculations of the equilibrium concentrations, if you level them out at those, you would have got your two marks. Yeah. Graph of H two starting at two mole, level leveling around the same point. Yeah. Cool. These graphs proved challenging for many students. Some students struggled with the starting points of both graphs based on initial concentration. Final concentration of each graph based off equilibrium concentrations and the point at which the graphs leveled out when equilibrium reached. The latter point was often missed, students overlooking the fact that all three species reach equilibrium at the same point. Difficulty was further compounded by vertical scale location where it's required that the graphs leveled off within correct vertical gradation. Right, so you've got a grid for those graphs from last week. So making sure that you're using them and you're leveling them off. Now, you're, we didn't do calculations, right? So you're, unless you're provided with actual data, yeah, you're not expected to know where it's going to go. The point is that oh, you want that partial change. There we go. 59% got the one mark. Student expected to know that the catalyzed reaction, the initial gradient of the graph would larger, reach equilibrium, level off earlier. Yeah. As per the orange line. Gradient and leveling off time proved most problematic. Another question, 2016 exam. Let's rub this off. Bromomethane, CH3Br, is toxic, odorless, colourless gas. It's used by quarantine authorities to kill insect pests. A simplified reaction for this synthesis, CH3OH plus HBr gives us CH3Br plus H2O. The thing I want you to notice too is the fact that H2O is a gas, right? The addition of water <coughs> as a liquid doesn't change the concentration of water, right? That's a dilution, so that's a volume change. However, if we add water as a gas, it can change the concentration of water, right? Yeah? So water as a liquid doesn't change if you add more water. Water as a gas, if you add more gaseous water, does change the concentration of H2O. Shouldn't really call it water, I guess, in that case. Okay, manufacturer of this chemical investigates reaction conditions could affect the time and process takes and the percentage yield. Predict the effect of each change given below and the rate of production of bromomethane circle your prediction. Increase, no change, or decrease, and give your reasoning. An increase in temperature with a, so, uh, sorry, this is 
this starting off rate of production. Right. So if we increase the temperature at constant volume, the rate, does it increase, decrease, or no change? Who says increase? You're thinking? Increased temperature on rate of production. Ideal. Right. Rate will increase. Yeah. Why? Because collisions. It's not good enough. Fantastic. Linking with activation energy and proportion of particles and frequency of successful collisions. There's our Two, thing, two things we need to talk about. Increase in pressure at a constant temperature. So, if it just says increase in pressure without specifying, we're assuming the increase in pressure is as a result of a volume decrease, right? So, an increase in pressure does what? Increase the rate of reaction. Why? More particles in the smaller area, greater frequency of collisions. Rate of frequency of successful collisions, increased rate of reaction. Fantastic. Right. Consider the system at equilibrium. Predict the effect of each change given below on the percentage yield of bromomethane. So let's go back for a moment. There's bromomethane here, product, right? And noting it's exothermic. Cool. Increasing the pressure. No change. Why? Yeah, but it's more the fact that we've got the same number of particles on the reactant side as the product side. Fantastic. Um, cool. Continuously removing the product CH3Br at constant volume and temperature. Drive forward reaction, so therefore increase the yield. Yeah, why? Well, we're removing product. What effect does that have on QC? Let's talk about that. Right, QC becomes, we're reducing the concentration of CH3Br, right? Decreases the value of QC, net forward reaction. We could, the graph below represents the concentration of three species involved in the production of CH3Br. So we've removed water from this example. Um, at time T1, a small amount of HBr was suddenly added to the equilibrium mixture, right? Instantaneous change. Complete the graph after T1 showing the change in concentration for each of the three species. Have a quick sketch. Off you go. Take a minute. It's a three mark question and it would probably take you a minute to answer. So it's pretty good. All right. Last question. When bromomethane used by quarantine officers, it's pumped into a sealed room that contains items to be treated. Describe one safety precaution that the quarantine officers would need to consider when using bromomethane. What do we think? Gas mask, top set, hazmat suit, maybe a bit far. Correct disposal. Well, it's a bit hard to dispose of a gas. Potentially, we could, that, it's less so for gases, yeah? It's a colourless, odourless gas that is toxic, right? Toxic means, well, toxic by definition simply means hazardous to health, right? Well, yeah, that would more, uh, I don't know if it's, if, if, if that was the case, then you would call it a, a skin irritant rather than a like relating to its gas cool all right 5a increase in temperature increase yeah cool 15 percent got one mark increasing pressure that would have got your second mark so 30 percent of students got that right 17 yeah, percent got nothing on this question really surprising um 14 got three and 35 percent got four right so Right, rates of reaction is generally well answered. Several students tried.